Hey everyone. Hello. <laughs> okay, welcome back. <laughs> I'm here with Jason Warwick. He's an elder with the Living Miracles <laughs> community. <laughs> Is that wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty true at the time. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. <laughs> On this show, I think the, the main concept is to bring in quantum ideas and relate them to the spiritual awakening journey. <laughs> and uh, my pathway is A Course in Miracles, as I think you probably know. But... Um, I've been intrigued actually for a while now of how quantum can actually be used in a, in a more bigger way to, to, support, to support the awakening actually, to come underneath it and really you know, s strengthen that direction in the mind, um, however, however it may look. So, so uh, the thought for today actually was to start with, um, with an experiment. It's actually called the thought experiment and it was proposed I don't know, for Erwin Schrodinger back in the 1930s, I believe. And so I have a clip here that I'm going to show that goes into kind of like a kind of summarizes, you could say, what, what the cat experiment has to say about the nature of reality <laughs> in, a, <laughs> in a way. So I think maybe we'll, we'll just go ahead and play that clip. If you can do that, Nicholas. And Jason and I will will discuss afterwards. Um, yeah. Well, I think. Well, let's see here. What what the clip was was getting at really, and kind of ties into some of the couple shows we had already was that experiments have shown that that you, um, until you actually look at something or measure something, it actually doesn't, doesn't exist. It only, it's only um, in a superposition of states or waves that isn't actually matter. It's not stuff. It's just like, uh, like thought kind of thing. And when you look at it, it appears. So that in Schrodinger's experiment, he was just saying that, yeah, that's true across any possibility of state, including a cat being alive and dead, which seemed very extreme to the world. But the best way of thinking about it is um, until I actually open the box to see how the cat is doing, the cat doesn't exist at all. And it's only by my looking at it that the, the cat appears in some state. So, so yeah. And then that just kind of, begs the question, well, if, if it only appears because I'm looking at it, then that must mean that it's somehow coming from my own consciousness. It's not out there, so to speak. So, so that to me felt like kind of uh, the, main, the main sort of point of all of that. So, so tying that into kind of like the bigger picture of, of what we're doing here and in the spiritual awakening, um, I have to say that when this idea came in, um, around Schrodinger's cat. Initially, I was in a prayer around wanting to have an experience that I could, you know, that could really show me that 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 it's true, you know, that um, that things are not existing outside of my mind. That I that I, it's only when I bring something to my attention that it's going to show up in some form. I'm going to perceive something, and. Um, and so, yeah, so it was, it was more just, I knew that once I put the prayer out, I just had to like sit back and, and wait <laughs> kind of to see how the spirit was going to te teach this lesson to me. And um, this morning, actually, I woke up feeling, uh, feeling really, really exhausted, actually. I was in this pretty intense fatigue for some reason. And um, one I hadn't felt in, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever felt that level of fatigue. I actually had trouble walking. I had trouble sitting up. I had trouble just texting someone to say this was happening. Like I was just in, like I was like the whole, like the machinery had broken down. We'll put it that way. And I just, I thought my first thought was there's no way I can go to the sh do the show today. I, you know, I couldn't even get breakfast, like all this stuff. I had this whole story kind of building in my mind around what was happening, what I thought was happening. And so 
so yeah, so that was kind of where it started. <laughs> and I thought, well, you're really going to have to have to show me now. But when I had a mighty companion come in and say, by the way, it's it's actually guided for you to do this show. Um, I, I initially saw a lot of ta a tantrum kind of come up in my mind, like, there's no way, this is impossible, what are you talking about? Like, I just, there's a lot of, like, the, uh, the committee, the inner committee really piped up and, and started to contest that, that idea. Um, and I, I had to, I did have to see different beliefs coming in as well that, that were there that I, you know, yeah, that I, I just hadn't seen before. So that was really that felt somehow really important, but, um, but yeah, after, after kind of sitting with it for a little while and, and kind of letting this story churn in my mind and believing in it, like wanting to be right basically is what it was. It, what it was, it was kind of, kind of having some idea of what I thought was going on and, and wanting to be right about it. Um, after a after a mighty companion had reminded me that I actually had a power to decide here, that I didn't actually have to go with that whatever that story was. Um, again, initially a, tra a tantrum. There's no way that's not possible, and so on. But once I really started to look at that as a possibility, and then I and then I went into prayer and I said, Holy Spirit, you really need to take this for me. You need to take this entire thing for me. Um, I. I'm, I don't seem to be able to do anything uh, about this. Um, I'm laid up. I'm my, I wasn't at all clear in my mind. Nothing was, nothing was looked um, hopeful, you could say, about the direction of what was supposed to happen. So I really had to surrender to a, a deeper place in my mind and hand it over. And I noticed actually, as soon as I did that, I started to get these little niggling kind of prompts of, of what I had to do next, which fairly quickly brought me out of that state of mind. But what I noticed was most dramatic was that within, I don't know, maybe two minutes or something, I was, I felt like I was right out of it. I was, I felt perfect physically. I, I was walking down the path just kind of like any other day. <laughs> I was like completely like, and then I caught myself and I was like, what, what was that? What just happened? And I, I couldn't reconcile how I was feeling in that moment with what I had been feeling all morning. And so, so I, it was just some kind of a, a recognition in a pretty dramatic way that I had, this power to decide my state of mind, regardless of the story, regardless of whatever story I was trying to tell myself and strengthen in my, the ego was trying to tell me and strengthen. I didn't have to go with it. And as soon as I let it go, I could see, not unlike being pulled into a movie that's really mesmerizing and you're really into it. And then you can actually have a, make a decision. I don't want to listen to that movie anymore. I just, I'm just going to pull back from it and then align in my mind with something that feels much happier and much higher. And so that was, that was the, sh the, the shift. And then, so there it was. And then, then I actually was watching the signs and symbols just kind of appear, like just these real obvious indicators, you could say, that I was meant to really keep going in this direction. And, you know, the smiles and the lightness and things were available. Like, you know, things that normally wouldn't be available were available to, to bring me there. So, um, so there it is. And then... I got here actually right before the show and I was talking to Jason about it and just going into it a little bit, I realized, well, what does this have to do with Schrodinger's cat? Well, it wasn't until right before the show that it really dawned on me that, oh, wait a second, just like the cat didn't exist at all until he looked into the box or until, until the experimenter looks into the box to see its state. Um, it wasn't, you know, the illness didn't exist, you could say, until I looked at it and bought into that storyline whatever it is got mesmerized and pulled into that movie that movie that's how i see it of what i thought was happening and and that it was a, a decision actually to withdraw my attention and my investment from that movie and i could just bring it back and and you know bring it back to the cat not existing anymore i'm not looking in the box anymore i'm simply i, I refuse to look in the box this is kind of what it was and I, I just kind of kept seeing that i had to make multiple decisions throughout the next while because it the temptation to go back to that to going back to looking into the box you could say was was strong so i had to keep making it but at this point i'm actually i don't have any awareness whatsoever of that physical state i was in this morning it was like okay it's it's good <laughs> so it's um so that I, that I felt was like kind of the key overlap between the between the two things so that was 
that was pretty much it. I just wanted to check in with you. <laughs> it seems, yeah, we were just talking this morning about um, the uncertainty and you were talking about Heisenberg and that it ties into Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. I just wanted to hear maybe if you could tell us more about that, how that relates to, to this. Would you keep yeah. Going? Yeah, that's really inspiring to me. Just Heisenberg uncertainty principle is basically another way of saying that you don't know if things are a wave or a particle until you look at it. And Schrodinger's cat is a concrete thought experiment, if you can say that, of the uncertainty principle. And your story is even more practical than Schrodinger's cat to me because... Yeah, it's just practical application. Like it, at any one moment, you got to choose which belief or Deepak was saying to even go beyond belief. I see that when you let go of the idea of sickness, you went beyond belief and got in touch with your desire for something else, but you didn't even know what it was, just truth. And everything else dissolved. So you're beyond the box, beyond the, the cat being dead or alive or even in the box. So yeah, I just it's a miracle. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we had that one time with Kirsten. Lisa and I were in uh, Kentucky and she was doing a, a month-long retreat down in Argentina. And then one day she called us and she was just all laid up, completely laid up in bed. And Lisa came in and just looked at her and was like, what's going on? She said, I'm sick. I canceled today's class. I can't do anything with the students. And we just prayed. And Lisa went into this kind of Jesus, take up your bed and walk kind of stance. And this is not right, Kirsten. This is not right. I'm feeling to tell you, take up your bed and walk. What do you need to do? What decision has been made in your mind in a very deep way? And she just exposed that the day before the person she was working with very intimately was having a lot of anger and rage coming up and and rather than delivering the message of the spirit to her she just held back and said ah i don't want to deal with that and that decision right there just invited the sickness in so to speak and so when when lisa just said take up your bed and walk what do you need to say to somebody she it just flashed through her mind oh my god i need to tell this lady this thought and call all my students back. So she called all her students back from all over Buenos Aires where Jenny and Greg are right now, actually. And um, yeah, all the students did the hour and a half drive. And by the time they got there, Kirsten's bed was out in the middle. She did it all from her bed. But by the end of the, the class, so to speak, she was walking around and totally, totally in her function. So I love those. They're, they seem to be so dramatic, those mm. sickness, health kind of mm. parables. Mm. yeah and i can see at least in my own life how the body is like such a like there's so much tied into it in terms of like a, like a certainty of oh you know maybe forgiveness can apply in these an emotional upset or it can apply in an interpersonal problem or it can apply in all these different but somehow the and this doesn't actually line up with my experience because i've had a lot of physical shifts you know of miraculous shifts nevertheless that, that thought is still there it's still wanting to hang on it's like no the, trying to explain away or dismiss miracles of the body that somehow those didn't really happen or they don't count or something so i feel like there's something about about that how this is going into the body but it does feel like there's there's a there's a real um determined kind of feeling underneath it that the ego has that it wants to be so solid with that mm -hmm. like if it can hold on to that then mm -hmm. the other ones it's like oh it's okay we can have miracles everywhere else but don't touch the body mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of thing and if you if you're going to go there just go a little bit <laughs> you mm -hmm. know so i can see how it really kind of yeah so i love those kinds of experience i mean they're so they're so dramatic and i just i've had other ones in my life where i would be really really sick and i would just have a quick quick shift and suddenly be up and be like what was that like almost like something had just literally disappeared and like you know so things that shouldn't happen you know and um as the way the way the world sees it and that you can't explain or you can't you know whatever you can't can't convince 
or what have you. So, so yeah, that. Um, the other thing was like last night I was looking at Facebook and I saw a quote on uh, from the course. I'm just gonna pull it up here. That made me think of Schrodinger's cat experiment. Actually, <laughs> I wanted to ask you about that. It said that nothing. Uh, it's from the text. It says nothing and everything cannot coexist. To believe in one is to deny the other. Right. So when I look at all of this, I can see that the quantum physicists are coming up with all these experiments and what have you, but they still seem to think that when you don't look, that something still exists in some form. In mm -hmm. other words, there's like, it might not be matter, but if it's waves, it still exists and it still mm -hmm. has a reality to it. And there's still something mm -hmm. to, uh, something to, um, to talk about. Mm -hmm. and, to appreciate or even even to love mm -hmm. you know <laughs> and so but the course actually is very definitive it says it doesn't exist at all like there's zero you know if i'm reading this right so so can you talk a bit about that like how how do these get reconciled or can they be reconciled yeah i look at even that cat experiment is whether the cat's alive or dead it's still just a metaphor because it still assumes there's a cat to be alive or dead or jeffrey and i were talking about I don't know if it's a cone or a thought idea that does a tree, when a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound and everybody gets caught on, yeah, does it make a sound or do you have to have somebody there, but is there even a tree, which is what you're, you're coming back to. All of these are just metaphors within the realm of bringing the mind to see that it has power and that beliefs seem to have power while you believe in the illusion. But your original quote was, you can't something like you either have everything or nothing. What was the quote again? Nothing and everything cannot coexist. Yeah. So everything is God and and his creations, you know, the, the true us, mm -hmm. us. And then nothing is everything else. <laughs> if you can say it that way. So all of these experiments and everything are just being done in the realm of illusion, just to use what the ego made to point you back. To the truth. Yeah. So I, I I feel like the yeah it actually brings brings my next question around that. Mm. Yeah. So the so the other quote that I had in mind was the. The world is an outward picturing, <laughs> yeah, an outward picturing of an inward condition. So, so how can we understand this from from that that perspective? Yeah, I, I looked at that again as so within the realm of the separation seem to happen, and you're clearing your beliefs and your thoughts and your ideas. You're going to see what it is you believe. I mean. There is a belief that the Holy Spirit's given us called forgiveness that we call that the happy dream that while, while it appears that the body is here, your state of mind is not identified with, with any of it and you, you remember your source. Mm -hmm. And so that's like the forgiven world, clear perspective. But do you have anything down there that feels like it's true to you other than I'm created, I'm as God created me, then you will witness that in the world. It'll be reflected out there. Like, for example, for me, it, for whatever reason, when I was younger, it seemed to think, okay, I've got to be smart and intelligent to survive. And then when I started going through this spiritual journey and trying to heal, I would just keep seeing, yes, stupidity everywhere and thinking, well, I don't feel like I'm stupid, but I see it everywhere. How do I heal this? But it, yeah, it's just been kind of humbling to see that actually, yeah, actually it must be true. Like, <laughs> I 
I forget who was doing their show, but somebody was going through their beliefs and they said one of the top ones is I'm worthless or something like that. Whose show was that in the beginning? Doesn't who Anna, okay, yeah. So they went through these lists of beliefs. And I see that as kind of equivalent to I'm stupid. And so the deeper I've gone. <laughs> yeah, just seeing the intellect. <laughs> Just covering over like even deeper belief of I'm I'm stupid. <laughs> Makes me laugh saying it. But. So I'm I'm out picturing stupid people. <laughs> Maybe I need to. <laughs> this is why I have them on my show. It's like, <laughs> I can't get through my own. <laughs> I'm pic out picturing stupid people. Because it's a severely repressed belief, maybe not about this character, but just like in the mind that I'm buying into. Mm. And as long as it's not completely up in awareness, you can have these other covering ones. And then when it's, I'm hoping when it's completely exposed, that will be mm. quality shown everywhere in that sense. Mm. Didn't expect to go there, but hope that helps. <laughs> So as long as there's still beliefs in the mind, right, then they're going to show up in some form. And then when we look, it's like this business of, of when we look and we see it sort of thing. It's only there because there's still something in the mind that, that need, in a way needs it to be there yeah. <laughs> because it has to go somewhere. Yeah. And so it, it's basically until that the deeper healing happens, however, whatever that is, then then it's almost, it's basically inevitable, I think is what you're saying, that we're going to see these, have these projections and that, and that's okay. It's not, we don't have to like, you know, I think the whole point of it is really just to, to, to not buy into what we do see as real, rather to just accept maybe it's, there's a falseness to it. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's similar to what I was telling you the other day on a call we had around this thing with children and how I've always had this thing with seeing abandoned children or like a, how do you call it, like a, a real soft spot, like the intensity that comes up when I think I see that. And there's this belief in abandonment and being separated from parents and not being cared for. That, you know, and then my prayer actually was to maybe to heal that somehow for the show, but I, I'm not in charge, obviously, of the plan, but it's still. You got three minutes, you know. maybe. We'll. <laughs> <laughs> three minutes is good. <laughs> but it's kind of like, um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> it's just there's certain things, I think, that at least for myself that that i can just see like i really want this healed like i'm, I'm tired of seeing abandoned children frankly yeah. you know it's like enough yeah. like what is it that that's in my mind that is like holding on and it's not it's like it's not letting go kind of thing it's mm, i've got you i've got you yeah. and then you might let go of lots of other things but not not that so to speak and so yeah well that was i think that was our prayer you I played you that audio of the, all the children crying and the border guard saying, you want a choir director, you know, and, you know, I can't listen to that. And so we, we just put it into a prayer to heal that. And I feel like what happened to you this morning was, it's really about seeing the power of the mind. So if you got in touch with that now, it'll probably just slowly transfer under the Holy Spirit's care to incorporate the children. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we don't have to personally figure out how that'll happen. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I guess just maybe just not judging it or something. Like, it's okay. That, you know, yeah. It's not personal. It's yeah. just, that just happens to be what. Well, I thought it was and, funny because you said every night at 1030, you would see, you would hear these children playing right. out of here in Mexico. And you 
you're like you're convinced the parents were kicking them out of the house and that they were abandoned <laughs> and everybody else was just no they're just playing there <laughs> in the street. but you literally hear what it is you want to hear you're like ah the <laughs> yeah like healing every night at 10 30 <laughs> It must be, you know, for me, I'll just make something up if, you know, if I need to in order yeah. to, to kind of, well, I guess it's all made up, but <laughs> it was a really obvious way that I'm making it up. So, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. I think I'm pretty much out of questions. I don't know if you had anything else to add. <laughs> no, I just, I've noticed a lot of people that come into the community for, the time period, you know, they'll see things that none of us have ever seen, like animal things with animals and all those things. Mm. It is a miracle to me that we're all together to not support the individual delusions, mm. but the truth, and so you can move through them quicker mm. together. Mm. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone. <laughs> For joining in today. I'll see you, see you again. <laughs> <clears throat>